Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ashley and I'm an architect in Ontario. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about why I decided to get my license and become a licensed architect. Now, I'm not going to get into the specifics as to why I decided to get into the field of architecture, but rather what led me to become a licensed architect. Now, I want to mention that in order to work in the industry, you do not need to have a license. You can work as a designer, as a technologist, as a project manager, and so on. So you don't have to get licensed. So what led me to getting licensed? Well, there was four key elements that helped me make that decision. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about those four reasons. So if you're curious, let's get started. One of the reasons why I decided to become a licensed architect was when I started to look at the numbers of how many women architects there were. Now, the number of women in architecture has increased quite a bit since the 1980s and the 1970s. However, the number of licensed women in the industry is still quite low. And I knew that because I was already in architecture that becoming a licensed architect and being a woman in the field, it was that more important for me to become licensed. At the time when I was researching and looking at the numbers, these were the numbers that I was getting. So this was around 2015. Here we have the percentage of female architects in Ontario. So in terms of the numbers, only 23.7% of architects are females. And this is the percentage in Ontario. Now let's look at the newly licensed Ontario architects and 33% are women that are being newly licensed. And of course, this includes architects and architects are not practicing. Now, the percentage of intern architects that are women are 45.7%. So it starts with 45.7 and you start to get 33% and then 23% at the end. These numbers really pushed me to getting licensed when I saw this because I also noticed when I was working in the field that women architects were very few. And then the other thing I noticed is that women in leadership roles within companies and practices and partners were even fewer. So that really pushed me and really led me to wanting to get my license. Now let's look at the number of women enrolled in architecture school and compare that with how many are intern architects and then eventually get licensed. So here on my screen, I have the female enrollment in Ontario schools of architecture. And so the enrollment is 51.4%. So here we have the female enrollment per school. So you have you know, Carleton University, Ryerson, Waterloo, and so on. And you can see that they're quite closely evenly balanced. Um, and you can see in bachelor programs, and you can also see the percentages within masters and PhD programs. So I feel like it is quite balanced. It's when you start getting into licensure that you start to see the numbers drop. And then the numbers begin to drop even further when you get to higher leadership roles as well. Number two, the second reason that inspired me to get my license, the future of the field. So I couldn't find this chart specifically, but there was this chart. And it's funny how this chart has such an impact on my decision making, yet I didn't save the chart and I researched quite a bit to find the chart, but I couldn't find it. So now this chart was really interesting because it was showing newly licensed architects versus the amount that I will be retiring shortly in a few years. So the number that's retiring and the number that was coming into getting their license is quite low. And that was really concerning for me because I was like, I love what I do and I love architecture. And if there aren't enough people getting licensed, then how could the industry and the field of architecture sustain itself if there aren't architects? So keeping this evolution of 
keeping the new generation coming in and the retired and balancing the, those numbers are important so that the industry can continue in itself. So I felt that it was important to get my license when I saw those numbers. I felt that it really was important if I wanted to be in the industry to also have my license. The third reasoning was opportunities and personal growth. Now, one of the things was I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to get licensed again. It, these reasons are kind of what pushed me, but I also didn't want to be limited with what I wanted to do in the future, even though I don't know exactly what I want to do, but I also wanted to keep my options open so that if I do change my mind, and I change my mind quite a bit, that I would have several options to choose from. And so getting my license was one of them so that I had all those options. And the other thing that really helped me to make the decision was the opportunity to grow as well, to grow and build my knowledge about architecture and to go through the process of becoming an architect really helps you to broaden your perspective on a lot of things and it helps you to build your knowledge and broaden it as well because it helps you when you're studying for exams you're getting yourself into that mindset of becoming an architect so that really helped me by going through that process to get into that mindset my fourth reasoning was i felt incomplete what do i mean by that is that once i finished my undergrad i again wasn't thinking about getting licensed but then i started to have the idea about getting licensed so then I did my master's. And then after I finished my master's, I actually was not feeling it. The, uh, the small idea that I had about getting licensed was removed. I started not feeling like getting my license was something for me and that I felt like it wasn't really necessary because you can still work in the field without a license under another architect or under you know a practice with I knew that it wasn't necessary so I felt like why go through that process however after a few months working and after doing some research like the numbers you saw in the earlier reasonings and thinking about it, I felt that it was important to get my license. I started to feel incomplete and it just felt like, oh, I went through all this trouble to get to finish architecture school, you know, my bachelor or my master's, and now I just stop it there. It just felt very incomplete. So I decided I went through all the trouble to finish all that school. I might as well go through the trouble to finish my hours, finish my exams and so on. So I'm halfway there, I might as well finish. So, and that really led me to then getting my license. So those were my four main reasons of getting my license. And I hope that helps you on your journey and maybe it'll help you to make your decision as well. If you enjoyed and got value out of this video, make sure to like the video. And of course, if you haven't subscribed, make sure to do so as well. If you would like more information about architecture school or about my licensure journey, you can check out this video here. I hope to see you on the next video. Until then, bye.